So here, for this differential equation, then it's asking the region in the xy plane where the solution exists. Hmm? Um, so where would the solutions solutions to this? Yeah, to this. So, so our f here is 2xy and 2 thirds, yeah? But then if you differentiate this, what, what do you get with respect to y? You would get 4 thirds xy to the minus 1 third, which would make it 4 thirds x over y to the one third. Yeah. Do solutions exist at zero? Y equals zero, which is which is the x half. Right. So solutions. exist on so basically you'd have to exclude this axis yeah. Yeah. right uh, so technically your x could be anything right but for your y so this is so I'm in the rectangular region now. You'd have to go minus infinity to zero. Union. Zero or y greater than zero, but not including zero. Right? So along y equals zero, yeah. they don't exist. Right. Okay, and what about the existence and uniqueness theorem? So again, the existence and uniqueness theorem will say along y equals zero. Yeah. Solutions not unique. Um, because, um, you know, the partial is not defined at y equals zero. Uh, not defined at zero, yeah. Why are we using a second version? What do we do here? We want to get it. Wait, say that again. Why are we um, the second group to figure out if the uh, Does that sound like uh, a solution? Uh, hold on. Yeah, let me let me rethink about this because um I think we have to reassess this. Do you agree? Yeah, but we want to integrate. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, that's not the issue. Wait, let me. Uh, Solution. This is. Let me. Let me rewrite it here. So this is dy over dx equals two x y to the two thirds. Okay. So. So for this, um, it says, let's answer uh, the first part first. Uh, determine in the xy plane where the solutions exist. So where do the solutions exist here? Um, we're going to 
integrate that to find the actual function. Right? Well, here the solutions exist everywhere without even integrating. Yeah. So here, solutions exist everywhere in the xy plane. So that means that the, the function would also have solutions. Right. So the function does have solutions that exist everywhere in the xy plane. But wait a minute. So, so that's as far as solutions go. Now, the fact that you have solutions does not mean that they're unique. Uh, you could have a repetition of solutions. So solutions exist. So part two of the question is saying, um, where do they exist and are unique according to the existence and the uniqueness theorem? Okay, now the existence and uniqueness theorem says that for your F, let's change colors here. So F being 2xy to the 2 thirds. Now this is continuous everywhere. But then try taking the partial of that with respect to y. What do you get? You get 4 thirds x to the uh, minus one, uh, y to the minus 1 over 3. No? And then if you rewrite this, you will get 4 thirds x over y to the 1 third. Yeah, that one. That wouldn't work at zero. So this is not continuous at y equals zero. Therefore, what are the regions in the xy plane where the solutions exist and are unique? So solutions exist and are unique everywhere except along y equals 0, which is the x-axis. Why? Because at y equals 0, you violate the existence and uniqueness theorem, and uh, partial of f with respect to y is not defined there. It will blow it up. You can't have zero in the denominator. Okay? Right. So they're unique everywhere except along y equals zero. So there's two parts for this question. First one, the solutions are everywhere, but they may repeat. Now, they exist and are unique are also everywhere except along the x axis. Right. So that, that Potentially solve this and find out uh, what's happening. You know, this is, a, I mean, you know, this is an easy one to, to solve. Yeah. Uh, you can separate the variables and um, You know, uh, I mean, if you if you're interested, I could show you. So uh, here, let me let me solve it. So you know, you should know how to solve this one. This is a fairly straightforward one. Uh, separate the variables so you get dy over which one was it? Okay, yeah, over y to the two thirds. Yeah, I just separate the variables, and this is two x dx, right? And then just integrate both sides now. Yeah. yeah, this two is a constant. I can leave it outside the integral and uh, bring this y to the two thirds up. Look what happens. You actually have to integrate this. So add one to the minus. You see why it doesn't work when it's derivative of zero? Because now, you know, this is minus two thirds plus one uh, y to the one third divided by one third, so multiplied by three is equal to x squared plus c, right? Uh, so now divide by 3, you'd get y to the 1 third, 
times two thirds of the yeah, uh, you'd get uh, y to the one third equals uh, x squared over three plus some constant c. Cube sides, you'd get y equals x squared over three plus c to the one third. Now we do have a solution. Yeah, but if if you if you um, look carefully at this, um, what happens at x equals one versus x equals minus one? You get the same exact y. Yeah. Because it's one squared, so that's why the solution is not unique. Because at one comma y of one, yeah. it's the same exact solution as at one comma y of minus one. You see? Yeah. That's kind of the elaboration on the theorem. Yeah. All right. Just uh, you know, no matter what x is positive or negative, you're going to get the same thing because it's squared, and the uh, you know plus c to the one third is not doing it. Uh, you can see that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's uh. Well, it's a cube well, root. Like a it's a bottom. cube root. Yeah. Oh, it's a cube root. Yeah, because you have uh, to the one third. So this is technically a. Uh, um, two-thirds shifted. But no matter what it is, um, it's the same uh, um, dilemma. So that's the idea. Um, any questions on anything we've done? Let's take a look at B. Yeah. 